Hello, and um, for those of you that weren't at the welcome session, my name is Rosal Metz and I'm the current chair of San Vera Scary. I'm a white female in my 40s with long brown hair wearing a black jacket in front of a blue wall with a window off to the side. I'll be honest, somebody has actually said I look like I'm being interviewed in an episode of The Office. I apologize to people who actually meet with me because you will never be able to unsee that. Um, so uh, for this portion of the program, I'll be reviewing the state of Sambero. I'll provide a brief overview of the community, talk about the current state of the community's work, and then end the program with a recap of the state of the software. Um, so I'm gonna start with an overview of the community. I just wanna make sure I have chat up and just in case. Um, this past year, we spent significant time focusing inward on the community, strengthening and clarifying the community's relationship with partners. To date, we have 33 partners, around 60 adopters, a little over a thousand Slack members and 16 active working and interest groups. While the number of partners has actually gone down from last year, many of those partners um, were actually inactive in the community and their formal withdrawal from partnership was partially spurred by our new contribution model. As I just stated, we spent quite a bit of time strengthening and clarifying the community's relationships with partners. That focus on the community harkens us back to the beginnings of Samvera in which our founders envisioned us really focusing on the community rather than just the technology. While we often have partner institutions that adopt different perspectives on how to use the technology that falls under the Sanvera umbrella, what continues to bring us together is the community our founders created. That community is on display here at Sanvera Connect. This year it is thriving. We had over we have over 300 unique attendees registered for the various presentations and events being held over the next week. Our attendees span over 60 organizations, 10 countries, and four continents. Once again, I want to thank everyone who has helped to make this event happen. And this success in coming together as a community mirrors the success we saw at Sanvera Virtual Connect held in May of 2020. There, there were uh, 185 unique attendees over the course of two days at that event. And I just wanna take a moment to thank the Sanvera Virtual Connect planners, Franny, David, John, James, Kevin, and Michael Klein, no relation to Heather Klein as far as they know. <clears throat> Part of us, what makes us so successful as a community is our working and in interest groups. For those of you that aren't familiar with our working and in interest group framework, it was developed to provide a lightweight way of creating groups to accomplish work or come together to discuss shared experiences. Criteria for creating interest in working groups are listed on the wiki and we encourage folks to engage in existing groups or develop new ones if the need arises. A number of those interest in working groups will be reporting out during our Monday program. I'd like to invite everyone to attend, learn about the important work of these groups and perhaps find a group you would like to get involved in. In addition, please take a few moments to check in on our other active working and interest groups. You can view their charges, meeting minutes, and their meeting schedules on the wiki. Next, I want to take a moment to introduce Samvera Steering to everyone. This is our first year with a fully elected um, steering body. While we will miss John Dunn, Robin, and Chris to have rolled off this year, we are excited to have Kevin Kochansky, Esme Coles, Brian McBride, and Alicia Morris join the existing steering members, John Weiss, and Simeon Warner, Hannah Frost, and myself. If you have any questions at all, please reach out to the members of steering and we will do our best to answer your questions or put you in touch with someone who can. Something else that makes the San Vera community different is our fantastic partners that identify as service providers. I just wanna thank CoSector, DCE, Notch8, and Ubiquity for helping to make this community strong. 
Finally, I'd like to encourage everyone here to consider engaging with the community. Join a working group, engage with our service providers, or attend one of our events. So I'm gonna move on now to the state of the community. As I mentioned previously this year, um, we implemented a contribution model for the community. This contribution model is a tiered model based on the size of the institution or service provider. More importantly, this contribution model provides us with a stable income to assist with hiring staff for the community. This year, we raised over $187,000 to help support the hiring of a community manager. This is an increase of $24,000 over the last year. This next slide provides a picture into the community's finances. We carried over a cash balance of $320,000 from last year. Our operating expenses this year were $58,000, which also included contracting with Richard, who's our operations advisor. Add to that our cash in hand from fundraising and the community currently has $435,000 cash balance as of September, 2022. The cash available to us today will allow us to pay for the day-to-day -day operations of the community and the new community manager's salary for the next two and a half years. From a financial standpoint, the community is secure. Moving on from my financial picture, I'd like to talk about the governance recommendations themselves. Last year at Connect, there were three governance recommendations that had yet to be implemented. They were the partners will develop a contribution model, steering will, uh, steering will hire centralized staff, and partners will assess governance at the end of 2020. As I mentioned, what feels like a million times at this point, uh, this year we implemented a con contribution model. This model was essential to providing a predictable income stream, which in turn has helped us implement the next governance recommendation, which is of course hiring centralized staff. Hopefully you were able to attend the last session with Car Carolyn hosted with our um, new Sanbera community manager, Heather. If you haven't met Heather yet, I encourage you to reach out to her. She's more than eager to hear about the needs of our community. Last week at the partner meeting, Jeremy Friesen presented on the work of the hiring committee. We had an incredible pool of candidates. We had over 131 applications and the vast majority of applicants were actually qualified for the position. Um, as you can see from the table on the right, we had a really aggressive timeline, but with Carolyn's capable leadership, our hardworking committee members, John Dunn, Jeremy, Richard, Brian McBride, and Carla Ash Hutchinson from Emory HR, we were able to hire Heather in time for this conference. So I want to take this time, opportunity to thank all of the various community members who helped us with this process. They are too numerous to mention here, but we appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to assist us with this really important work. The final recommendation we needed to work on was assessing the governance model the community had put in place. There were a number of ways that we had gone about this. First, um, Carolyn did an assessment of the community using the It Takes a Village framework developed at Lyricis. As you can see from this chart, respondents from the community felt we were fairly stable in our technology, but we were growing in the areas of governance, resources, and community engagement. Our focus on these areas helps to understand some of the data I have presented up to this point, but also helps to better understand some of the data I will use of the software. If you're interested in learning more about the It Takes a Village framework, I've provided a link here. <laughs> Sorry, everyone, that's Noli. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, I have a menagerie in my house today. I'll just tell you all. There's actually a chipmunk running loose in my house. 
the cat who may appear in the window behind me at some point brought it in and uh, it is roaming free. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's a zoo here, literally. <laughs> um, in addition to Carolyn's assessment, we also had a small group assess the progress of the governance recommendations. That small group included Chris, our um, Brian McBride, Esme Coles, and Richard Green and Margaret Mellinger. This report indicated some questions and concerns around governance. To further unearth these issues, a survey was recently released that attempts to dig deeper into these issues. If you are so inclined, the survey is still open and you can provide feedback via this link. The hope is that now that Heather is on board, these two efforts will help to provide a roadmap to how we can continue to improve upon the extensive work the community has undertaken over the last few years. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about looking ahead, some of the work that we'll need to do over the next year or more. Um, in July of 2020, Samvera Steering renegotiated our MOU with Lyricis. At that time, Lyricis asked us to consider becoming a formal open source project underneath their umbrella or to identify what was next for the community. Over the next nine months, Steering and our community manager will lead the community in discussions that will help us identify how we move forward and what the implications of a decision are for the community. Additionally, there is still the matter of hiring a technical coordinator role. In the assessment report I mentioned in a previous slide, one of the things surfaced was whether or not there was a need for a technical coordinator role. I found that actually really interesting. It wasn't something that I expected to hear. So we'll want to dig into this a little bit further. In addition to questioning the need for a technical coordinator, the membership also expressed concerns over our membership model and whether or not that could sustain both roles. If we do choose to move forward with a technical coordinator, we'll likely need to identify further revenue streams to help sustain this role. And then of course, there is the business of hiring a technical coordinator. I think that provides a good segue into the state of the software. This was our requisite slide that shows how the community software has developed over the years. This data is pulled from openhub.net and I encourage you to go there yourself and explore the metrics about our software. But I'd like to dive a bit deeper if you'll let me. Previously, I mentioned that our It Takes a Village assessment labeled the technology as stable but not static. From this slide, you can see that our number of contributors to the Sanvera GitHub organization has recently taken a downturn. So the, not the number overall, but the number over uh, the last year. While at first glance this, glance, this may be concerning, fewer contributors over the last year does correspond with the notion that we have stable software. Again, this notion of stable software is supported by the number of commits. But if you've looked into the It Takes a Village assessment, you know that these processes are cyclical. And you can actually sort of see that um, in, in the numbers here. Um, I suspect that much of this work will pick up in the next couple of years. A lot of this development work has been spurred on by a number of community development efforts. I've listed them here and I wanna thank everyone that has contributed to those over the past year. We appreciate the work that you do. So I've listed uh, the Valkyrization of Hyrax, Project Surfliner, the Contribution Model Working Group Sprints and Polar Vortex, I would, like to apologize. Thank you, Jeremy. Oh, and Solar Vortex. Oh, right. Well, oh, right. Here you go. <laughs> um, <clears throat> additionally, I want to make sure that folks are aware that November 16th through 18th, San Diego will be holding a Dev Congress. You can find more information about that at the URL on this slide. Um, and a big thanks to the planning committee made up of Anna, Jeremy, Trey, Kate, Lynette, and Adam.
Next, I want to call out some of our software's key support systems. They are the High Crew Interest Group, the Component Maintenance Working Group, the Roadmap Alignment Group, and the HIRAC Interest Group. I want to give a big shout out to the individuals on these groups and to everyone who may, takes the time to ensure the community software delivers value to the community. Um, so you can see here, this is a list of everybody on those um, different groups and those people who have a star next to their name actually participate in multiple groups. There, there it is again. <laughs> Once I finish up here, um, I'm sure you're asking yourself, will I ever finish? Because that dog barking is just going on and on. We'll have a number of presentations on Hyrax, Valkyrie, Avalon, and Haiku, so please stick around for those sessions. Finally, aren't you glad I'm using that word? I want to talk a little bit about the grants that are driving current development. The University of Oregon Libraries, in partnership with Oregon State, um, are, were awarded a $200,000 IMLS National Leadership Grant to support its project. Open Impact Developing Robust Analytics for Open Source Solution Bundle, Hyrax. This one-year project um, grant addresses the development of a suite of applications and reporting tools for Hyrax, an open source and Vera-powered repository front end. <clears throat> we also have the Advancing Haiku um, Collaborative Project, which Torsten spoke about. That project supports the growth of open access through institutional repositories by introducing significant structural improvements and new features to Haiku. The project partners are University of Virginia Library, Ubiquity Press, and the British Library, with funding from the Arcadia, from Arcadia, a charitable fund for of philanthropists Lizbeth Rousey and Peter Baldwin. The project will design and implement specific advances to the open source community repository product Haiku. The project runs October 2019 through August 2021. <clears throat> Finally, we have the Pennsylvania Academic Library Consortium, Inc. or PALSI, in full partnership with the Private Academic Library Network of Indiana, Palinet, Representing 24 academic libraries in Indiana, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, West Virginia, and New York. They were awarded a $130,000 IMLS National Leadership Grant to fund a 12-month infrastructures and initiative project to explore, develop, and pilot a haiku-based open source multi-tenant consortial institutional repository that will deliver ultra-low cost hosting, discovery, and access to digital material. From the very beginning, Samvera has been a self-organized, self-funded, and sustainable project. Partners join the effort because it helps them achieve their local priorities, not because they are chasing after grant money. For Samvera, this is key. The community software survives and thrives based on contributions from partners. That is not to say that grants don't play a role in the Samvera community. As you can see from the previous slide, many of our partners and adopters utilize grants to help them achieve their goals. If you are interested in including Samvera in a proposal for a grant, please email the Samvera Steering Group at steering at samvera.org or reach out directly to Heather, our new community manager. You can help, we can help you with everything from plugging you into the right working group to writing a letter of support for your grant. If you are in receipt of a Samvera related grant that is not listed on our wiki, we encourage you to add the details there. This page in particular that I've linked to helps us track, keep track of how the community is growing. So finally, finally for real this time, I wanna thank you all um, for and, um, for all that you do and please keep up the amazing work. And now I'm going to hand it over to the amazing Julie Hardesty to provide an update on Hyrax.